Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Reverend David Kniefelkamp brings us today's message, Breathe Forgiveness. Reverend Kniefelkamp will lead us in worship after our opening In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, who gives, he gives the power to become children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the second Sunday of Easter is from Exodus chapter 33. 
And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship, each at his tent door. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us, so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me, and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is, for, is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then He appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of, the day, of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he bestowed on them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. 
Now Thomas, the one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors being locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning comes from the Gospel lesson, John chapter 20, particularly where it says, 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Just as in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And then and the man became a living creature. God takes his disciples who are locked in an upper room for fear of the Jews, those disciples that have been gathered together, who have had their head chopped off as Jesus was dead. They are like that lifeless, dead object that we see in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, which has the breath of life breathed into them, and they are now made alive that breath that gives them life once more. The breath of life comes into the dead church and makes us alive. The people of God that are given life through this breath. And because they're given life, he also attaches with it as he adds, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And so with that breath of life comes the forgiveness of sins. Just as the small catechism teaches us, for where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Together, on the evening of Christ's resurrection, he gives new life to the people of God. He proclaims to them the breath of life. He proclaims to them the forgiveness of sins. He, through his sacrifice, through his death and resurrection, provides for the people forgiveness, proclaims to them new life. And so likewise, that breath of life has come into us through the forgiveness of sins. We have the breath of life. We have been given life as we die in our baptism and are raised to new life, as we eat and drink of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so we receive the forgiveness of sins, and with the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. We have that breath of life given to us as we have received the forgiveness of sins. Even this morning, as you confessed your sins, and we proclaim the forgiveness of sins to you. You have received the breath of life. Now Jesus also speaks when we withhold the breath of life, when we withhold forgiveness from those whom we have withheld forgiveness of sins. There are times when we don't recognize our sins. There are times when others are not repentant of their sins, when we ourselves are unrepentant of our sins. And so we should be denied forgiveness until we repent. For even the small catechism teaches us, withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. But when we do repent, we receive forgiveness. Who are those unrepentant? Those that do not recognize their sins? Those that actively live lives against God. Those who do not believe in God. And so we withhold the forgiveness of sins from those who actively live in lifestyles that are contrary to God's word. Those who continue to live in their sin without recognizing it, without remorse, and without confessing their sins. So we are called, likewise, to examine ourselves, to confess our sins, and to receive forgiveness. And just as we have received forgiveness, we receive the breath of life, and we share that breath of life with others. We give that breath of life that has come into us to others as we forgive them their sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, we proclaim that same message that Jesus comes with. And when he had said this, he breathed on them 
and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And so you have been given the same gift of forgiveness of the Holy Spirit as the breath of God has entered us. So we too get to breathe out that breath into one another as we get to forgive one another, as we get to share that grace and mercy that Christ has come and died for the forgiveness of your sins. So we get to share that forgiveness with all the world, with all those around us. The breath of life has been given to us for the forgiveness of our sins. And the breath of life has been given to you so that you can share it with others to forgive their sins. This very breath of life breathed into you is just as life-giving as that breath in Genesis chapter 2. As God formed the man out of the dust of the earth and he breathed the breath of life into it. So we have life and salvation through Jesus Christ who has died and risen for the forgiveness of all of your sins. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may but be your grace, confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We're happy that you joined us for worship today. Reverend Kniefel Camp is the pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in White, South Dakota, and First English Lutheran Church in Aurora, South Dakota. Sunday morning worship is held at 8.30 a.m. at Zion and 10.30 a.m. at First English.
Thank you for tuning in to Main Street Living. I am Pastor Scott Seiler, the president of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and one of the preachers on Main Street Living. St. Peter urges his readers at the end of his second letter to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each week on this television program, pastors from our churches bring you God's Word centered in that gospel of Jesus Christ so that you may grow in knowing and experiencing His grace in your life, especially that you may know that forgiveness of your sins and everlasting life are His gifts to you by Christ's saving work on the cross and through His resurrection from the dead. It is only through your generous gifts that this Christ-centered program can stay on the air. And so we would ask of you two things. One, please pray for Main Street Living asking God that this program may continue to be broadcast for the spiritual welfare of each of you. Two, please consider giving a gift to Main Street Living. This program is made possible only through the generous contributions of people like you. You may send your gift to this address, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Again, the address is Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Again, thank you for listening to this program. We pray that you may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that you may live a grateful life in response to that grace. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ.